Welcome to the Just Gem Radio Show, another show to share with you some inspiration, some information to have us spend a little time together looking at what we haven't before or a little closer at what we already have to see if we can make some changes for ourselves, for our lives, for the world. The Just Jim radio show is about the practical part of life and yet the inspirational part of life making a difference in it. So I'm Jim, Just Jim. I'm the uh, pastor at Sarasota Center of Light, but more importantly, on this show, I'm here to share with you my experience, a little bit of strength and hope to see about how we can make a difference in our world together. I spent a long time doing this. It's not just a hobby. I have been doing this for over 40 years, helping people find their truth and to discover their path and their relationship with the divine, with themselves, with each other. This morning we're going to be discussing discovering and living your truth. Well, that's quite interesting of a topic. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot to say in, in one quick uh, title, but uh, it's not about me telling you what your truth is, that's for sure. In fact, there's just too many people out there believing they know the truth and professing the truth and saying what the truth is and how it is and how it isn't and all that kind of thing. So I'm not here to do that at all. I can't do that. How could I possibly tell you what your truth is or how to live it? And I am here to share some ideas and some concepts that might open some windows, some doors, some awarenesses that would help you see a little closer or clearer what's going on with you and where you are. And you know, you know, the truth will set you free. So as we're walking through this process, what I'd like you to consider is the truth is now. This moment of you, this moment of truth, this is who you are, how you are, how it is, how that shows up for you is your truth. Now, it can obviously be distorted by veils of perception or a lot of different things. We'll talk a little bit about that and wherever, however you arrive in any moment is your truth. And then you can look at that from a deeper place, from a higher place, from a more open place, and begin to refine or evolve into the simplicity of you being you, wherever that is, however that is, in any moment. <clears throat> I make a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, I make a lot of references to Pink Floyd. They have a, an album that I, like to use when it comes to defining truth. I believe truth is a momentary lapse of reason. Why is that? I believe that our reasoning in life is important. It gets us through, we deal with what's going on, we make decisions. Absolutely. When we allow our reasoning, that, that continuing either hamster wheel of thought or the river of emotions or all the activities that we're involved in to slow down long enough for there to be a, an opening, a lapse. Or they'll say that you'll find the truth in the stillness and the silence. Well, there's not a whole lot of that going on. So taking a moment to let go and just like show up wherever you are can be refreshing and is important. I've been told by a very important organization that the truth is, uh oh, here I'm telling you what the truth is. Naps should be an important part of every day. Okay, a little bit of humor there, but rest is good and lapse is letting go long enough to be able to have a recognition and an experience of what is in this moment. I mean, we all get going on our hamster wheels and on our, our rivers of life and 
we're trying to you know negotiate the direction of the kayak we're in sometimes without a paddle <clears throat> excuse me and we are making our way as best we can but this moment is the opportunity to look again to instead of automatically follow whatever it is your previous understanding or perception has told you this moment is look again and, and, and keep in mind truth truth itself is not good it's not bad it's not right it's not wrong that's not what we're talking about here we're talking about getting clarity in a focused moment now we're starting to define something else uh, consciousness being conscious I've been saying be well be safe be conscious in your actions and your interactions because of what's going on in the world right now but being conscious is paying attention right here being present being aware it's experiencing the truth of you right now you do have the choice to what I call wonder and wander <laughs> Those trails of life can take us in a lot of different directions, sometimes in circles, but to wonder and wander is a good thing. I mean, we can, we can explore places we haven't. And yet, by bringing our attention purposefully and deliberately, not forcibly, but naturally into each moment, we not only are able to see what's in it, we're able to bring more to it. That's where we start talking about living your truth. But let's start with experiencing it a little bit and then kind of becoming it. And that's how you end up living it. So you have a choice. Do you want to be lost or found or both? <laughs> oh, gosh. It's, it's as if with some of it's going on around us in the world, um, we have been wandering around and wondering what's going on. Um, and, and many of us, I've been listening to people, and we've been talking. Some people are, are lost, trying to find answers, find, trying to find direction. The key is in this moment that it's your choice. You have what spiritual principles would call personal responsibility. You have the right to look and see or not, to be clear and focused or in denial to be present in the moment and be who you really are or be distracted the personal responsibility it, we can't really be responsible for somebody else's actions we can be responsible as parents or as co-workers or other things that we you know work together in but for personal responsibility it's your ability to be able to personally respond to your life and the most effective and direct way you can influence first your experience of yourself, which is where it begins, and then whatever circumstances and situations, interactions or relationships that you have going on is by first being able to, able to respond, be responsible by knowing what's going on how that relates to you and to whatever you're bringing your attention and intention to. I mean, we are living right in the middle of what I call conditional reality, which means <clears throat> we're in the middle of all kinds of circumstances and situations every day. And yet we have a choice to be wherever we are. Each of us can, can complain. It, it's hard to, <clears throat> excuse me, it's hard to remove yourself from your country or your, or your home. You can't remove yourself from your family. So when I say you have a choice, on a day-to-day -day basis, in, in general, you choose to be wherever you're at doing whatever you're doing. And so although certain things hold you in place a little bit more, you have that, that opportunity to choose again and you can do that in each moment you can especially choose the way that you 
see whatever's happening wherever you are and whatever's going on. You know, your experience of yourself. You can be aware in the present moment. What thought am I having and, and why am I having it? Thoughts aren't happening to you. There's something that happens as a result of what you believe or what you understand or how you put your attention on something. So why are you thinking that thought? And then the, the why of the thought frequently brings up a feeling. A feeling is usually a response to something you've already experienced or something like it that has a memory associated with it that then stirs that same feeling for you. It's kind of a, either a reaction if it's more survival based or responsive if you've got a little space between the stimulus and the way that you show up with it. But the key is, is that you can take a look and see what and why you're thinking, what and why you're feeling what you are. And then these thoughts leading into feelings frequently influence and impact directly our choices and our actions. So here we are in our mental, emotional, and physical expression. And by being in the moment, paying attention, being conscious, seeing the truth of what that is, whatever it is, I'm afraid. I don't have enough. I'm not sure. Those are truths of a moment. They don't necessarily set you free, but they're truths. And so we can bring ourselves to the moment and you can say to to me, hey, well, what do you mean I have a choice? I've got this or that going on in my life or this is happening with the people in my life. Yes, yes. And, and God forbid anything uncomfortable or, or, you know, difficult is happening or, or going on in your life. Many blessings to you. But as we make our way, there are many distractions that can keep me from being able to live my life fully, to know my truth, our own denial within, our own avoidance of things. Um, where there are, of course, many different addictions, drugs, alcohol, etc. Ways we can suppress or push away or avoid or completely uh, block out what might be going on. Now, I'm not talking about living a life of abstinence so you're sitting on a mountaintop. I'm just talking about paying attention in the moment. You've heard that uh, life is an illusion. So some of these things that are going on become like, I call them veils of perception. The reason I call them veils of perception in this idea of illusion is if you look through a veil, frequently it's, I like to think of it as being kind of lace patterned so that when you're looking through it, you can see through it, but the laced pattern distorts your ability to see clearly what's just on the other side of it. So perceptions are our own choices of our beliefs and understandings that act like lenses that we look through at the world. And, and you can't see the world for what it is if you're looking through the lens of your own perception. Now, you see it that way. It ends up being your truth. But the illusion is like your vision reflected through this veil, patterned kind of veil of your perception. If you take a moment to let go, just let go. I mean, right now, try it. I mean, it's hard to stop your thoughts, your feelings, and what's going on. And if you're driving, don't stop driving. But I'm just saying, allow yourself to just let go for a minute and notice something else besides what you're thinking, feeling, doing, or think she needs to be. Because then you stop looking through that perception. You're looking clearly in the moment at whatever's right in front of you.